In today's video I'm going to be talking all about the seeds that I'm going to be sowing for my allotment garden in March. Hi everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Emma and these are my allotment diaries. are going into March now and it can be very very tempting to want to sow absolutely everything so if you look on the back of most of your seed packets that you've probably already purchased you will see that a lot of them say that you can sow from March so it might be from March to May from March to June from March to September maybe they even say February that doesn't necessarily mean that everything that you've got you should sow in March March is still quite a cold month so we're gonna get some frost we had some frost this morning actually um, we're still gonna get possibly snow hail so it's not the ideal month for putting most vegetables directly outside you can definitely start a lot of your vegetables seeds indoors right now make sure that you've got space for them and also be aware of how long it's going to take before they have to go outside because for some things in particular I'm thinking of sweet corn courgettes warm loving plants and even pumpkins even putting them out in late April is going to be too early for them because the soil is still not going to be warmed up enough and we've still got that risk of frost and cold. So hold your horses a little bit, especially if it is your first time growing vegetables, we don't have to rush in. Having said that, there are definitely some seeds that you can get going with this much and you should definitely be excited. So if you have purchased my allotment planner, and if you haven't, I've got the link below. This is an author copy that I've got so it doesn't have this little strip across the real one. If you have purchased my allotment planner and you go to the March to do jobs, you will see a few things that I have suggested that you can sow in March. So I have suggested sunflower seeds, Brussels sprouts, sweet corn and also towards the end of March starting to plant out your early potatoes that you've probably already started to chit. Um, if you see my last video on what to sow in February you might see that you can start chitting your early potatoes. If you haven't done it you can just start chitting them now in March it's fine. Uh, I usually plant mine out at the end of March. So these are just a few suggestions of things that you can get sowing in this month. Obviously I've left lots of room for you to write down all the other seeds that you might want to sow um, or jobs that you want to be getting on with. So in my last video you might see that I've already started a lot of my brassicas. I've also started a few things like cosmos flowers, sweet peas and also peas, early peas that you can grow now. Now some things you can start to sow directly outside if you really really are desperate to and I have started a couple of things. One of the controversial things I've started already is my parsnips. Now a lot of people say that parsnips need the warmer weather to grow so should be started later in the year. Other people disagree and say that they can tolerate a bit of cold. What I've done is I've sewn them under cloche. Cloche is a material you can buy. It's, it's just basically like putting a blanket over your seedlings and what it does is it warms up the soil and it protects from frost and a lot of seedlings can't handle the frost when they're particularly when they're very small. So the fleecing is basically like covering them in a nice little blanket and keeping them all warm and tucked in. So I have started my uh, parsnips. I've also started some carrots as well and a little bit of all round lettuce. So those things I have directly sown out and you can just get on with that now if you're really desperate to. I wouldn't blame you. I'm going to go through some of the flower seeds that I have. So a couple of them I've already started and a lot of them I'll be starting sort of mid to late March. So you might have seen in my last video I have already started my Cosmos. It's not too late to start these now so March is a gr another great time to start sowing your Cosmos seeds. I'm just putting them into a tray and putting them into my little greenhouse which is next to me here. It's just a, a cheap flimsy outdoor um, greenhouse I picked up from Wilco's just for about $14.99 or something a few years ago. It's a bit flimsy but it's got a plastic cover over it and um, kind of reminds me of that cover that you get on buggies uh, to protect children from the rain so I'm not entirely sure how warm it keeps it in there but I do know it keeps the frost away so I started my cosmos in there they are so great for attracting pollinators because the flower is so open and then you've got the um, the middle bit it's so open it's so vibrantly yellow it just attracts all the bees and butterflies to it like no tomorrow so it's just such a great thing to have in your allotment plot as we know pollinators equal better crops so, so more towards the end of this month I'm going to start my Rebecca. absolutely love Rebecca. such a beautiful flower again really great for pollinators because it's really you know it's got an open head basically they can get to the middle any flower that the, um, the pollinators can get to the middle really easily is just really great for them so these are fantastic I'm also going to start some verbena this is the verbena 
Bonariensis. I think that's how you say it. It's the long wispy purple one. I'm going to grow this in my back garden though. Um, it's quite wispy so you can kind of see through it and I think it'd be great in borders. And I've also got some cornflowers. I've never grown cornflowers before. They were actually giving away free cornflower seeds at Tesco or somewhere last year I think. Um, and a lot of people grew them and they were so pretty. And then moving on to a few of the salad crops and things. So I'm going to start some celery. This is something I got from Seedcraft. It's a seed subscription box. If you're not sure what seeds to sow each month and you really are stuck, um, if you subscribe to Seedcraft, they will send you a box of seeds every month and the seeds that they send you can be sown that month. So you don't even have to think about when to sow stuff if you subscribe to something like Seacraft. I've got a link below with a discount code if you quote Emma's allotment. I've got the link below. Um, but yeah, they sent me some celery. So I'm gonna start my celery indoors this month. Very exciting, I've never grown celery before, so I heard it's easy though, we'll see. <laughs> Um, I'm also going to start some wild rocket um, probably towards the end of March. Uh, I'm also going to start my courgettes indoors as well. This is the Courgette Astia F1 variety. These can be started from March through to May indoors and then planted out from May onwards. It does really suggest June though because you really do need the soil to be nice and warm. Courgettes are just fantastic plants. They will give you thousands. Just a quick tip, only plant one or two plants if you quite like courgettes. If you're utterly obsessed with courgettes and can't get enough of them, plant five plants because you will eat courgettes the rest of your life. <laughs> you will, it, will, it will produce you, one plant produces so many. And another tip, make sure that you pick them when they get to courgette size because if you leave it just like even a few days, it gets to the size of a marrow. It's so, I mean it's amazing but to eat an entire like marrow of a courgette is a lot. So just make sure that you are harvesting them regularly. Also harvest some of the flowers as well because the flowers are absolutely delicious. A few things that I have already started in February, you might have seen this in my last video, but I think it's worth mentioning because you can still sow them this month. Uh, a lot of the brassicas, so I'm doing my um, Brussels sprout. This is the fill basket. So fill basket variety, there we go. I got this free with Kitchen Garden Magazine. Um, and yeah, I've already started these. And then I've also started my purple sprouting broccoli, such a beautiful, beautiful plant. And I've also started some cauliflower and also this, which is Calabrese, uh, which I've never sown before, but I've sown it this year and it's growing quite well at the moment. I'll show you it in a moment. I'm gonna show you how some of my seeds are doing that I showed you in my, that I talked about in my last video now. <laughs> So the two rows that you can see here are purple sprouting broccoli and my calabrese. Both of these have come up really, really, really well. I'm still waiting on the sprouts, which have yet to germinate, and the cosmos. And I'm not really surprised to, to hear about the cosmos because I think that does take a bit of time. Um, hopefully they're warm enough in there. I mean, the others seem to have uh, managed okay. So come on guys, hurry up, wakey wakey. Over here I've got my peas starting to germinate. You can sow these directly if you want to. I haven't just because the mice like to dig up the seeds at my allotment plot. So what I've done is I've sown two um, in each of these. You can see they're starting to come up now and then I will transfer them into the ground once they get to about that high, I'd imagine. Maybe a little bit higher, we'll see. These are my sweet peas. For some reason, they are just not coming up this year. Um, this is not really deep enough for a sweet pea. Now, if you've got something um, a lot longer than that, that's great for them because they love to send their roots down really, really long. I was just hoping for a little bit of germination and I was gonna whack them straight outside and see see how they do. Again, sweet peas are something that if, it's, if these just do not work, I will just sow them directly later on in the year. But there's still time. I've not lost faith in those yet. And then here are my lovely tomato seedlings, which you can see have all started to come up. So we have got the Crimson Crush doing really, really well. We've got the Super Steak tomatoes. I've got a few of them coming up, but then I mean, how many plants do you really need? I've got about four, I think. So that's, pre that's pretty excellent, really. I've got these Sun Baby tomatoes doing really good. And then these are my Gardener's Delight. Look at the Gardener's Delight. So many of them absolutely foolproof. If you are a first time grower, go for Gardener's Delight tomatoes. These are not quite ready to prick out yet. What I'm waiting for is the real um, seed leaves. So these ones here that you can see, these are um, seed leaves. 
So every single plant that you grow will get two leaves like that. The ones that are growing in the middle there, which are very, very teeny tiny, I'm not sure if you can even see them, those are the true leaves of the plant. And what I'm waiting for is for those true leaves to get bigger and then I will know that it's time to take these out and pot them on into pots. But I'm not gonna do it while they've got the seed leaves because they're just not big enough yet. So I used to sow my seeds into multi-purpose compost. I never used to get seed potting compost or anything like that because I just didn't have the money for it. And a, mul a big bag of multi-purpose compost always seemed to do the job and was cheaper because um, I could use it in a multitude of different ways. Recently, I have been using coir uh, to sow my seeds in and I actually am completely converted to using coir. It's such a fantastic material, I believe it's made of coconut husk. Um, one of the things that I love the most about it is that it retains moisture so you don't have to constantly worry about watering your seedlings. I find that when I've watered some of these in here that have got the coir product with them, they've just stayed nice and moist for a long time, um, which is exactly what your seed needs um, in order to germinate. So I've just found that watering is just so much easier when I use coir. It doesn't hold many nutrients, so it's a little bit nutrient deficient. Now you can get coir product that's had nutrients added to them, um, but the fact that it doesn't have that many in it is good for your seedlings. You don't want your seedlings to have too much richness and too much goodness. Um, if you give your seedling absolutely everything that it needs, it stunts the growth and it grows slower. And the reason for that is because it has no need to get any bigger. If your seedling is growing in a nutrient um, deficient kind of environment, it's got more need to get bigger. It's gonna spread its roots out. It's gonna push up towards the sun because it's gonna be desperately trying to find more nutrients. And that's what you kind of want to do. You have to be a bit cruel to be kind with your seedlings. So I'm gonna use some coir and I'm gonna sow my, I'm gonna sow my Rebecca. So what I've done is I have soaked my coir, um, what do you call them? Like. I want to say coasters because it really looks like a coaster. My little coir pot things are in warm water and warm water is a lot better for breaking it up so I've heard I used to use cold water somebody told me try hot water it really does work so warm water is definitely better for breaking this up quicker. I'm going to use an egg box because I don't have any um, trays left and I like to be environmentally friendly I think they will grow really well in this so we're going to use an egg box. I always find myself just sort of crouching down on the floor here to sow my seeds. I think because it's nice and sunny. Um, I do have like a garden to go into, but yeah, I just I just like it here. <laughs> so I've always sown my seeds here, so why change the habit of a lifetime? Push it down a bit, but we don't want to compact it too much. Just a little bit so it settles. Rudbeckia is such a beautiful flower. Like I said, great for pollinators. And all we're going to do is we're going to put all the seeds into our hand because they're so teeny, teeny, tiny. I'm not gonna do it straight from the seed packet. If I did it from the seed packet straight into there, they would just end up in a big clump in one of them. So I'm gonna pour it into my hand very carefully. Put a few into the coir product. About a little bit. Just a few in each one. And what we'll have to do is when they start to grow, I'll have to make a decision on which one is the strongest and then pull out the other ones, which sounds a bit ruthless and I don't like doing it, but it's what we have to do. We're gonna pat it down a little bit and this is just to make sure it's got contact with it. What we want the seed to do is to get contact with the compost and we want it to get um, soaked in moisture so that the seed starts to break open and then our plant actually starts to emerge from the seed. That's basically what we want. So what I'm trying to say is pat it down. <laughs> I think we might use the other side as well. It seems a waste not to use the other side of the egg box, doesn't it? So I'm gonna put something in there, I think. Let's start our verbena, just for fun, just to be a little bit ahead of the game. And if it dies, we can either buy it as plug plants later on, or we can just start again. Then to do from the seed packet, and then we're just going to very, very lightly scatter them across the surface. So what I do is when they get their true leaves, not their seed leaves, their true leaves, I'll prick a few out and pot them on into little pots, probably the size of about this, I'd imagine. So like I said, make sure you've got room if you're going to do all this. A lot of the time I um, direct sow at my allotment plot because I like to grow things in my back garden too, which is where I am right now. 
um, and although I just don't have room to hold them all a lot of things can be direct sewn later on and they do catch up so if you have to direct sew your courgettes they will catch up with courgettes that have been sewn before in pots so don't panic there's time for everything <laughs> go I just wanted to add that if you're looking to add a little bit of colour to your garden right now and you just cannot wait um, for your daffodil bulbs and your tulip bulbs to get going because a lot of mine are coming up but they're not flowering yet so I'm kind of like I'm in that in-between stage where I'm waiting for flowers to appear try planting some violas um, violas or pansies and you can pick these up in most garden centers now just for a couple of pounds they are absolutely beautiful and they add so much colour to your garden and the violas are also edible, so you can pick off the little flowers and you can put them on things like salads or even on avocado on toast and just jazz it up a bit and make it look really beautiful. So it's a great addition for your, for your allotment plot or just for your garden. Um, and also, if you are planting any um, bare root fruit bushes, roses, trees, now is the time to do it. So about a week ago I planted in this blueberry plant. I just picked this up from B&Q. It was only about five pounds, which I think is really good. And you can see it's already really, really healthy. What I will do with this one is uh, feed it with an ericaceous feed because that's the kind of soil it likes. It likes quite acidic soil. So just take a little look at your plant and it should tell you on it like what the conditions it needs. And then look, you can see around here, I've got all of my all of my tulips coming up it's so exciting I have some lovely daffodils coming up too just love this time of year I just love the springtime I hope this has given you a little bit of uh, inspiration as to what to sow in March don't get too ahead of yourself and anything that you are directly sowing I would definitely recommend closhing uh, with a nice bit of fleece or something like that just make sure because we do still get quite a lot of frost at this time of year yeah I mean by all means go and whack stuff in the ground the best way to learn to do gardening is just to do gardening just go out there and sow something put it in the ground see if it grows and and with the weather changing every year it is almost impossible to know exactly when the best time to sow something is hope you enjoyed this video and if you did do subscribe to my youtube channel i'll see you in my next video guys thank you so much for watching bye